This is Twit. But really, the big news of this week, and we should get to it, is Windows 10 X revealed. Yep. What is what is Windows 10 X? Uh, finally. <laughs> So remember, we used to talk a lot about Santorini and Windows Lite, like this idea of them making right. Windows more consumer focused, more streamlined. This is uh, not based core. On this is not core. Windows Core. Yeah, it is based on top of Windows Core OS. Yep, this is it. Here it is. 10x. I want to prepare you folks for something that you're going to find alarming. Uh -oh. So if anyone is listening to this, they should sit down. I love this thing. I am alarmed. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. Where did you put Paul? Yeah. What happened yeah. to Paul? <laughs> I think this is the smartest thing Microsoft has done for Windows in forever. Well, wow. okay. So we now have three bizarre bugs in Windows 7 after mm -hmm. end of life, <laughs> which yep. the moral of that story to me is... This thing is such spaghetti code <laughs> that you can't change, you know, even um, after 10 years of fixes. I, I don't know, Leo. I mean, how many times have you brought, bought a product of any kind and had it go south the second the warranty <laughs> expired? <laughs> That's true. That's true. It, it, it's, <laughs> That's just bad know. karma. That's the toast landing yeah. butter side down. But yeah. I feel like it is, it is, it is illustrative of the, of the fact that this code base is freaking old and freaking messy. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it is. So I yeah. like the idea, but how much of a rewrite is Windows Core? Yeah. I wouldn't well, call it a rewrite. I, I wouldn't I would either. Call it a, I'd a say so they've been yeah, they've been trying to do this for years, right? They used to mm -hmm. have this thing called one core, which was the idea that they could take common pieces that would work across different device types and pull them out and have like this unified base platform that would work on different kinds of hardware, right? So they've been trying to do this for years, trying to detangle mm -hmm. the core of Windows. Yeah. So Windows well, Core OS a lot of the modularization that, stuff, right? Right. Like componentization. Right. So whatever. Windows Core OS is that, but on top mm -hmm. of it, then you have all this other infrastructure, which is what we learned about at Developer Day this week. We learned right. about all the containerization they're going to do, how that's going to work, what the new shell will and won't do in this operating system. So it was mm -hmm. finally like Microsoft explained all the things we had been writing as rumors all at once. Right. You know, to kind of put it in historical perspective, Microsoft had, um, I'm going to use the word created, just don't, don't bear with me, but created DOS, created Windows on top of it. Mm -hmm. And it was, a, you know, a nightmare from a reliability perspective. And very early on, Gates and Microsoft wanted to do something more modern. They wanted something that could compete with Unix. Ended up bringing David Cutler and a bunch of other people from digital over to Microsoft, created NT. And then the plan was for NT to eventually replace Windows to become Windows. And it did. And it took until 2001 for that to happen. So the original version of NT shipped in 1993. I want to say those guys came over from digital probably in, what, 89, somewhere around then, something like that. Um, but so, you know, however you want to measure that, from shipping the first version, NT 3.1, in 1993, and making it look and work like Windows 3.1, and then eventually having it take the place of Windows in Windows XP in 2001, right? And so today, it's about 20 years later, <clears throat> so quite a bit more time has passed. But you have to give, <laughs> seriously, Dave Cutler, I mean... This thing has is so resilient and was so well designed that it was able to continue all these years and has been adapted to all kinds of different uses, um, not just on computers. You know, the Xbox is based on NT, et cetera, et cetera. So this thing is not a complete rewrite. It's not a new S. It's not like a microkernel. It's not a, you know, right. whatever. But um, it is the same basic fundamental architecture. But what separates this from the stuff that Microsoft worked on previously, this, these other attempts to modernize Windows, Windows RT, Windows 10 on ARM, Windows 10 S mode, et cetera, is that they finally are acknowledging that this thing can't be called Windows unless it runs all of the apps. Mm. But we still have to solve that same problem we've always had, which is that most of the apps that people run on Windows today are insecure, unreliable. Uh, they're Win32 desktop apps. And so how do you do that? in a way that is safe and, and still performs well. Um, and so the solution they came up with is the one we've been talking about for a long, long time. So 
I used to describe this as some combination of containers and virtualization. And if you look at their description, yeah. that's exactly <laughs> what this is. It is. Um, I know. So that's yep. one of the reasons I like it, <laughs> you know, but, mm -hmm. um, and by the way, you know, I don't have the hardware. I don't know how well it's going to run, et cetera. And we can talk about all that, but I mean, this is a way to move forward with this platform. And, um, I, I mean, it, it seems to me like it's a very good idea. So to me, the biggest surprise that we heard yesterday at Windows Developer Day was yeah. every app is going to run in a container. Yes. Like yeah. we knew well, containers two, that's good. were going to play in. Yeah. We knew two, containers two things, well, were going to be there, but we didn't know it was for every app, right? We I would didn't say know there, that. Were, there were two big surprises. Yeah. So when we had heard containers a, a year ago or so, and at yep. the time when you hear that, you think, well, Obviously, what they mean by that is Win32 apps are going to run in containers and that each of those yeah. apps will have its own container. And that's how you're going to isolate it from the OS. They'll virtualize the registry and do all those mm -hmm. things that we've you know seen over the years with various virtualization solutions. Except it's it's not like that at all. It's, it's interesting. Like Win32 apps all run in the same container. Yep. Uh, modern mm -hmm. Win32 apps that are packaged using Microsoft's latest MSIX packaging scheme will each run in their own container inside of the Win32 container. Yep. And then UWP <laughs> apps, which is it will run in what's called a native container. And that's really interesting because again, you know, they've want they Microsoft collectively, I guess, has <laughs> seen this kind of mobile platform as the future of Windows for a long time. Um, the market has obviously not gone in that direction, but those apps will each run in their own container. Mm -hmm. um, according to Microsoft, and that may or may not be it really, I don't know if that's semantically or realistically or, or it's just literally different than what's happening today in Windows 10. I'm not actually sure yet, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was very interesting. I didn't expect the it whole was. thing to be based on containers, but it is. Me neither. Nope. I think that's uh, that's exciting. Uh, yeah. As it long is. as you can yeah. communicate together and stuff. I, I don't know how containerized uh, mobile apps are, but I feel like that's well, I think with mobile apps, we I, we would have used the term sandboxed, right, right, <laughs> right. And right. I, containering and again, is different. It's a, it's very lightweight, right. So though, I, right? I don't, right. Yeah, I mean, that's what they say. So, like, like as of today, I can't say like, is this a semantic thing or is it mm. literally a technical difference? I I don't know for sure yet. So, what we did learn though about the container is it's not a VM, right? Like, there's actually the Win32 subsystem in it, <clears throat> like. Right there's part of the operating system in the container. So that's why they didn't call it a virtual machine. <laughs> you got your right? operating system in my container. It's like, um, exactly. you know what this reminds <laughs> me of um, thematically, and I would say technically as well, is when Apple moved to Mac OS X. And yeah. they had a what is, was essentially a container to run classic apps. And it was one container for all classic apps that they would it would run in this environment. And I, it sounds like it's something like that. Yeah. The problem is that I've heard from some people it's not the entire like operating system in the container because that isn't how you would build that, right? Mm -hmm. Since there isn't the entire operating system inside the Win32 container, it means they're having compatibility issues. Like they kind of glossed over that in the developer day. They said, you know what? Most Win32 apps are going to run. <coughs> um, but well, what I heard uh, is, by the way, so but, far, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry to interrupt, but I mean, uh, but if you take that sentence at face value, Depending on where you see it, they, they've added yep. something to the end of the sentence. And that something is at launch because this thing is yep. going to improve over time as well. And right. some of the reasons right. you're going to have compatibility issues are because some of the changes they made to the shell. Applications that install and put something in the tray are not going to have that thing in the tray anymore, even though that will fail silently in the Apple install. Or apps mm -hmm. that try to extend the file or the um, the file explorer with, you know, like a right click option you sometimes see after yep. you install an app, that's going to silently fail as well. I'm sure antivirus stuff will be problematic. I'm sure games won't work well. Yep. I'm sure there'll be all kinds of different things. But right. the fundamental difference between this and, again, those other things, RT, S mode, Windows 10 on ARM, is it not working on launch day does not mean it doesn't work forever. Whereas in those that's other right. things, though, if it didn't work, it's not going to work, <laughs> you know. Like right. you would have to, as the developer of the app, change it to make it work. Yeah. Whereas in this case, it's the operating system support that's yeah. going to change. Mm -hmm. And that's a, this is, it's impo It's hard for me not to look at this and think, why, the, why didn't they just do this? You know, 10, I think 10 years ago, eight years ago. I don't mean to make a, I don't mean to make a joke out of it, but 
it's a hard computer science problem, right? Because yeah. if you look at yeah, that yeah. one slide they showed with like RDP and how that was connected and where the kernel is and where the drivers are going to sit, I'm like, wow, this is not just like we slap some containers on top of like Windows <laughs> Core. Like, yeah, yeah. like they're, right. this is right. huge. This is why this is taking them so long and it's so hard to pull off because it's really complicated what they're trying to do. The real just question to, is how isolated are these well, so containers? Because that, that's what you way, really want. Yes. You want these, the, because if, if for instance, you install malware, you want it to run in this isolated environment yep. where it can't contaminate. So we can't we can't say authoritatively at this point. But the the thing is, you know, people, uh, I, and I've I've written about this for so long. It's it's weird. I had to, I mean, I can't remember when this first came up, but I I always refer to this kind of stuff as like this legacy deadwood. But the problem mm -hmm. is you can't get rid of it without Windows being Windows, right? You can't just cut off a huge chunk of Win32 mm -hmm. and say, we're not doing this anymore. But when you do something like this where you containerize it, you know, for lack of a better term, however it's done, whatever the level of protection is, you you have arrived at something more sophisticated than has been the case with Windows for the past almost 20 years. Um, it, you are at least, we don't know what the level is. Like, you know, you're wondering what the isolation is. We don't know yet for sure. But it is a level of isolation that does not exist today, whatever it is. 